Hello, and welcome to our webcast titled Harnessing the Industrial Internet to Improve Performance Throughout Your Organization. I'm your host, Matt Grant, publisher of Power Magazine. And for today's program, we will hear from Declan Lynch with Board Gash Energy, along with Will Howard and Chad Stoker with GE. Declan Lynch is currently leading the implementation of an asset management program for power generation assets that will align the organization, organization's goals of Board Gash Energy and deliver on customers' expectations. As his organization looks to transition to the industrial Internet, Declan has also been heavily involved across the broader project management function within the organization, playing a key role in the recent development, construction, and operation of a combined cycle gas turbine power plant. Will Howard is a senior product manager for GE Power Services. Will leads the strategy and roadmap development of asset performance management software for the GE Power Services business. Will has 18-plus years of experience and demonstrated skills in consulting and project product management. He brings a unique combination of formal training, power plant operations, and customer experience to the role. He has spent the last five years with GE working specifically on software and services for GE's Monitoring and Diagnostic Center, which monitors over 1,600 gas and steam turbines around the globe. Will has also been involved from the beginning with the development of Predix, GE's operating system for the industrial Internet, to help customers unleash the power of big data and analytics. Chad Stoker is the manager of GE Digital's Industrial Performance and Reliability Center, a predictive remote monitoring and analytics center. The IPRC is currently monitoring thousands of critical assets located around the world. Chad has more than 10 years of experience developing implementing and monitoring predictive analytic programs for dozens of companies across the power, mining, oil and gas, aviation, and military industries. As an FYI, this presentation will last about 45 minutes and will follow up with a Q&A portion. Before we get started, I would like to point out a few housekeeping items. At the left of your screen, there is an area where you can type and submit questions to the speakers. Feel free to send in questions at any time during the presentation, and we will try to answer them by email following the program for those that we aren't able to get to in the Q&A section. If you are experiencing any technical difficulty, you can type that problem in the same area at the left of your screen, and our production staff will assist you right away. This program is available for download, and you can access a PDF of the slides under Event Resources at any time via this live studio link. It will be archived on our server, and future viewing will remain free of charge. You can use the same URL to reach the archive program as you did to reach the live program. A certificate of completion for professional development hours will be sent out via email to every registered participant who attends. Before we begin, we would like to thank GE very much for underwriting today's program. Their generosity allows everyone to attend the presentation at absolutely no cost. So with that, I will turn the program over to Will Howard. Will, take it away. Thanks, Matt. Um, so we'll get started here. Today I wanted to uh, talk first about some of the dynamics that are impacting the industry, uh, kind of to set the stage for software and, and why we're, we're doing this and why we're doing it now. Um, first, we'll start with market volatility. Uh, you know, today one of the things we see with customers uh, in the power industry is that you know things are changing, right? They today uh, with new uh, renewables coming online, with the lowering of fuel prices, uh, new regulations, plants are not operating as they were uh, when they were first built and designed. Uh, they're you know plants that were operating at base load are now uh, cycling and vice versa. Uh, those changes are changing the way that they do their maintenance, the way they operate, and the decisions they need to make uh, around those aspects. So they need a platform that, uh, and an applications that allow them to understand what's going on, understand what's happening with their equipment, uh, and adapt. Uh, and we see that continuing as new uh, technologies come online. Uh, that won't, uh, won't be changing. So the, the second thing uh, that is impacting the industry is the workforce. Uh, Today we see a lot of customers that have uh, operators that are getting ready to retire. Uh, estimated a 30% over the next five years uh, in the utility space will be retiring, uh, and with that will go uh, a lot of the knowledge that they carry with them. So, you know, a concern uh, of customers today is how do they retain that knowledge? 
uh, how do they you know, do more with less uh, as they lose those people and have problems bringing new people online. Uh, in addition, those, those new, uh, as people retire and they try to bring uh, new employees on, you know, the younger workforce that's coming in, uh, there's a tr some trouble in, uh, in to acquire those new talents to attract uh, new talent uh, as the new digital savvy workforce uh, has an expectation of using software uh, and and understanding the, you know uh, of that in their business place and they want to uh, use newer and updated software uh, to do their jobs and so there's an expectation there that isn't being met today currently. Uh, last, we'll talk. Uh, I'll mention the industrial big data uh, movement. Uh, so as new uh, equipment comes out with additional sensors, uh, as computing power uh, becomes more advanced, uh, more capable, uh, there's an access to uh, more data that's generated off that equipment and the ability to utilize it um, is becoming important. Uh, a lot of customers are seeing uh, the need for that data, but they don't know what to do with it or how, how, how to handle it and harness it. So, you know, something that addresses all those these concerns, uh, these dynamics is important. Uh, something that we look to do that with uh, software, software today. So next, uh, we'll talk about uh, data islands. These are an issue that we see uh, currently. So as as we talked about, more of that data coming online, uh, more and more is being generated. Uh, but today, it's still it's still on islands. There's still siloed uh, approaches as. As you see here, uh, we, we talk about it real in three main categories, uh, external data sources that are available uh, and, and there today, uh, such thing as uh, weather and gas prices, uh, as well as the IT side of the house uh, where your ERP systems and things that generate data and information are there. And then the OT, uh, which is more familiar with a lot of our operators uh, and utility customers. And even in that same uh, space of the OT space, operational technology space, there's a lot of um, information that's being generated, but again, it's generated in, in specific systems uh, and siloed. And that information, because it's hard to get to or hard to share, uh, is, is not providing as much value as it could. We see uh, that being a big issue today that uh, customers are looking to address. Uh, you know, and tying those systems and integrating those systems is very complex and very difficult uh, and costly. So having something that, that that makes that simple for them, uh, that could bring that together as, as, as a key driver of what uh, we've been working towards uh, here in GE uh, and what leads me to my uh, next slide. So here uh, we talk about the Predix platform. Uh, the Predix platform, uh, was its purpose was to, to address those concerns uh, that we mentioned uh, before. Uh, that starts with connectivity, uh, being able to connect those different data sources not only the data sources that, uh, again, that are in the operational technology space, um, but also across um, those other data sources such as external and IT, and bring that together in one location uh, to really uh, utilize that information effectively uh, and doing it away in a system that was built uh, for those different types of data. A lot of the current uh, solutions that are out there today in the IT world uh, weren't made for uh, the type of data that's generated, the amount of data that's generated off of uh, industrial machines. Uh, and so building a, a secure platform that, that would do that uh, it was a very key factor and a decision uh, that GE has taken to uh, get into the space and to provide an, you know, an application and a platform uh, to build those applications on that are important. Uh, in addition uh, to connecting data, it's connecting people to that data so again, having a platform that uh, provided a single pane of glass or an ability for uh, different roles inside of an organization to share information and to collaborate, uh, to make decisions all the way down from an operator uh, at a utility or at a plant, um, operating the plant all the way up to the CEO boardroom who are making capital, decision, capital decisions and larger strategic direction. So being able to share the right information uh, with the right people uh, was very important, and having something that facilitates that uh, was very important. Uh, you know, doing it uh, with the traditional means today of individual uh, traditional software uh, just wasn't able to provide uh, that salute, that capability that it's needed. Uh, again, there's a lot of uh, solutions out there today that you know provide individual uh, 
value, but there was a lot being lost in the fact that we weren't able to connect, uh, again, data sources and the people to, those, uh, to that data. So Predix allows us to do that. The Predix platform then uh, was a starting point to where we uh, built applications, and that's what I'll uh, talk about next. Uh, on top of the platform, uh, G has built uh, applications in three uh, main categories. The first uh, at the bottom here is asset performance, um, what we call asset performance management, uh, really focused in on, on the equipment uh, and the health of the equipment, understanding uh, potential problems, uh, problems that might be coming up uh, with your equipment so you can operate more reliably, uh, make uh, better maintenance decisions and better operating decisions uh, with that. Building on top of that, uh, core capability of asset performance. We have operations optimization. Uh, really now getting into more uh, of a fleet view, uh, looking across a uh, fleet of assets, um, having the key performance indicators um, of how those, uh, those assets are operating and making decisions on how to better utilize uh, resources uh, across that. And then uh, the top layer here is business optimization. Here we talk about now having that foundation, um, having that foundation uh, of reliability and understanding your operations, you really can then uh, get into understanding how to trade into the market, uh, how to utilize that new capability now, you know, the, ex the additional capability that you get with the, uh, the first two layers, and really you know, take advantage of that uh, in the marketplace. Uh, so that's where business optimization is. Again, you know, Starting with those market dynamics and knowing that you need a platform uh, to generate that, having a platform that does scale and allow you to do that, uh, as well as uh, applications that, that provide that, that core foundation across your organization all the way, again, from the operators uh, through the CEO level, trader level, uh, is very important. Uh, with that, I'd like to pass it over to uh, Declan Lynch, who, again, as it was introduced earlier, leads uh, the asset management uh, program at Whitegate Facility in Ireland. Uh, he's been implementing uh, some of our solutions starting here with asset performance. Uh, so with that, I'll pass it over to uh, Declan. Thanks very much, Will. Um, as Will said, uh, I'm, I'm operating or working, sorry, in the asset management area and general engineering for the Whitegate asset. And today, I'm just going to talk briefly around the deployment that we've undertaken with GE for asset performance management and the cloud-based analytics, data analytics platform. And just quickly, it's a sort of an overview of our company and who we are. Um, even though the slide there down the bottom left says 2003, our company was formed back in the 1970s by the Irish government, and we were the state gas company. Um, so uh, from 1972 to 2003, we were sort of a single commodity company, gas supply and transportation business, uh, state utility, and a monopoly. Um, we, on our graph there, the lower left, 2003, that was a year when the Irish government signaled their intent to liberalise the energy markets in Ireland, and they gave an indication that 2008, 2009 would have been uh, a year that board gas as a company could uh, enter the electricity market in Ireland. So ahead of that liberalisation, we decided to build a power a, a, uh, power station in 2007. We, be we began construction of our Whitegate facility, a 450 megawatt CCGD power plant. Um, and then that allowed us in 2009 to, to go embark on what we call the Big Switch campaign. It was the most successful energy switching campaign in Europe at the time. And it allowed us to take a big share of the electricity market in Ireland, both the industrial, the uh, SME, and the domestic markets. And we became, a, I suppose, a dual fuel supplier at that, at that point. Um, in 2010, we, we wanted to get into the energy business, so we bought a company in Ireland called uh, Southwest Services, SWS. They were a wind business, and they had uh, over in excess of 100 megawatts of operational wind, but what we were after at the time was they had 500 megawatts of pipeline development projects. Uh, so we, we purchased that business, and we, we obviously had a wind portfolio in our, in our asset space at that stage as well. And in 2010, Whitegate Power Station came online. Um, and in 2012, the Irish government decided to sell the energy arm of our business. Uh, the gas pipeline, the original business, was to remain in state ownership. Uh, and by 2014, the sale was completed, and Centrica PLC from the UK purchased Borgash Energy. 
um, and it's sort of completed this transition of our company from state ownership to uh, a private business. And the SWS, the wind business, have, was sold to a separate company uh, as part of the sale. Um, so 2005, where are we today? We're a highly p- competitive, multi-product, multi-service, customer-facing energy company. Um, um, and basically, the, the next slide sort of re- is a very broad outline of, um, of the three structures that we have in the company. So we have, we have a single asset. We, we had a lot of assets in terms of wind and pipelines and so on support with, with that side of the business. All, that's all gone now. So we came back to one single large asset being a white gate uh, CCGT plant. Um, it's the cornerstone of our electricity business. We use it for hedging out our customer portfolio book. Um, and Whitegate is operated by a very small team. Um, it's just a core team of three people. And I think as the presentation goes on, that's a very important part because we outsource all of our activities or as much as we can. And this is where our relationship with GE came. Even though GE were part of the construction of the project, they're also the company who operate the plant for us on a day-by-day basis. And they're also, we have the CSA contract with them. Internally, obviously, in Borgash, we have the usual support functions in terms of trading and EHS departments and procurement, but small core team of three people. And as you can see there, we have a, a trading function. Would have been pro- initially started out trading on the gas and then electricity, and we would hold the largest percentage of industrial customers in Ireland. And again, we, we focus on internal, internal portfolio optimization across the, our electricity and gas portfolios. And we do offer... Um, downstream support services to all of our customers in terms of energy products and energy efficiency services. Again, our retail arm is uh, the customer focus part of the business. Again, we have multi-products uh, in terms of electricity and gas, and also we have many services in terms of boilers and heating controls and connected homes. And our parent company, uh, Central Gates, well, it's referred to as one of the large six energy companies in the UK. Um, they own British Gas, which is probably the largest energy retailer in, in the UK. Um, and both British Gas and, and our own company would have had a similar history in that we would have both started out as state utilities and we would have transitioned during the years into private ownership. Uh, we also have a, we have a sister company in the United States, again, in terms of energy supply called Direct Energy. Um, after the sale of Board Gas and the purchase of it by Centrigade, as a business, we, we were we were thrown a couple of challenges by our parent company. Basically, we were were challenged to grow the business in Ireland. Um, We were looking to increase our market share across all segments of the business. We were primarily looking to be more efficient and more effective in how we do business. Um, And we were looking to simplify what we do um, and to make ourselves more relevant to to our customers. Um, We were also facing into... Uh, increased competition from other CCGD plants, uh, increased wind um, in Ireland, solar, interconnecting with um, with the UK. The pool of money was effectively staying static, so therefore there was more competition for the same amount of money. So we had to we had to uh, get um, get smart in how we do business and become more efficient. So one of the challenges for Whitegate that can flow down through the business to us was, you know, how can we drive performance improve, improvements across the Whitegate business? Effectively, how can we get more out of, the, out of the existing resources that are disposable and simply do more with less? We've always been benchmarking ourselves through, you know, through GE in particular in terms of what world-class performance is for, for operating power stations. And we asked ourselves the question, you know, what information do we need to be able to make better decisions that would result in higher performance across the power station or generally are maintaining existing high, higher performance? And we asked ourselves, what can we do with that information to make that higher performance sustainable? Um, We looked at, effectively, plant data and the information that we could get from that data. And we said what we needed was we needed reliable, timely, and relevant information. We sat down with GE and we we really asked ourselves, as sort of the plant owners and the plant operators, you know, what information would both our companies like to get so that we could enhance our decision-making? You know, when, when did we need this information? who got the information, what format was it in, you know, and what were the trigger points from this information that would drive decision-making. Um, and we said that going forward, we had to be proactive in seeking out this information to support our decision-making. We also looked at, um, you know, what was uh, key challenges in terms of what was the cost of us having poor performance. 
you know, where does it impact the white gate business model? Where does it impact our, the overall organization's business model? And we ask ourselves, you know, could we preempt negative financial impacts from poor performance? And could we plan ahead to change those outcomes? Um, we also looked at what were the financial benefits to white gate from, from high performance? You know, what were the financial impacts and benefits that would flow through both to ourselves and GE as our partner in running the power station? So on that, we looked at carrying out a gap analysis across Whitegate, and you know we identified that we lacked a sort of a single challenge for information from across all our assets. So Whitegate is one, we see it as one large asset, but we obviously have many sub-assets, plant and machinery that make up the Whitegate power station. And we realized that we had multiple vendors providing multiple bits of information, and none of it was coordinated. And it was all basic, off-the-shelf information, but gave us very limited data about overall performance. And as G referred to it, we didn't have a single source of truth on the, on the site. But we did realize that we had a lot of data there. We had access to a lot of data. And I suppose at little cost, we could install extra sensors to pick up additional data that could actually push information to us with respect to trying to get performance improvements across the plant. We also recognized we just didn't have the resources to manually go in and interrogate every piece of kit on the plant in terms of what vendors supply, and we realized that we had to try and find ourselves a, a single source of truth for that. Borgash, as an organization, we decided that um, it, this was a sort of a standalone decision that we wanted to install an asset management system for the company. And obviously, with Whitegate as a standalone asset, our only asset at the time, we said that we would build it around Whitegate, and as we purchased assets going into the future, that asset management system would in, in, in capture all the, the newer assets. At the same time, GE came to us and introduced this asset performance management concept. And whilst we were looking at the, um, the asset management, we decided that we would implement ISO 55000. And during our uh, sort of gap analysis on that management system, we realized that it's a, it's a very static system in that it focuses on the elements and the process for implementing and operating an asset management system. But it's sort of light and has a light touch on asset performance and you know, what, how to do asset performance well and what is good asset performance management. So with the APM product, the asset performance management from GE, we realized that we had an option here that we might have a solution which could be a dynamic element to our asset management system. And we decided to pursue this with GE in the sense that we felt that the asset performance could actually help to generate the information and the data that we needed to, um, to drive operational performance right across the site to a higher level. So GE, uh, GE and, and BGE sort of partnered up to deliver a system that could benefit both organizations, BGE from, some, from um, sort of the, uh, the benefits of, of uh, higher performance of running our power station, and G the same in terms of the benefits they get from, from uh, improved performance right across their operation platform here. Um, we focus on gathering and analyzing data but that could be organized and structured to provide information basically about the health of the equipment on site, which would allow us to make better decisions in terms of you know, the performance of the various assets that we're managing here. Um, we worked in tandem with GE and we identified key sections of plant and equipment across that we wanted to be able to get a, a better handle on overall performance, overall, overall picture of health, and move away from, you know, sort of uh, OEM-based, sort of time-based maintenance to sort of condition-based and performance-based maintenance. And both, both organizations worked closely to develop a portal, which, as GE would call it, a single source of truth and effectively through which the respective management teams could view the white gate assets, retrieving information, being pushed information, again, that would work um, towards um, improving overall asset performance. And in the, in the power station, I mean, we're looking at, you know, again, our KPIs, high level, highest level KPIs with improving availability of the plant, the reliability, the output from the plant, lowering our heat rate, improving our efficiency, lowering our operating costs, lowering our maintenance costs, you know, better EHS KPIs. So GE proposed, under the APM product, they proposed um, this, this structure, this architecture here for us. And it was a, the, the unique selling point for this particular product when we saw it from a BG perspective 
was that it covered the entire plant. Um, we would have had quite a significant amount of um, um, instrumentation on the gas turbine and the steam turbine and generator, slightly less so across the balance of plant. It would have been very much specific to what the OEM equipment supplier for the balance of plant provided at the time. So we realized we were a bit light in terms of BOP equipment. And again, GE presented the architecture and it ticked all the, ba the boxes that Ford Gash wanted because it was a site-wide platform. Um, and from there, the, the, um, it cast the blanket right across the balance of plant and it also introduced new uh, vibration equipment for the center line plant. And this is the main key focus for Ford Gash. As a company, we focus heavily on risk management and risk management processes. And we've, we've long been carrying a one-line risk in our, in, our, uh, in our risk management system, which is the balance of plant failure. And because there's thousands of pieces of kit that go in to make up our balance of plant, it would, wouldn't be possible to identify one particular piece of equipment that's going to fail. So again, this new APM spread around the plant, encapsulating the BOP, was a product that we were very, very interested in. Um, the G architecture here that you're looking at also provides an integrated solution to cover multi-vendor uh, basis. And again, this was crucial to Borgash in deciding to implement this solution. It meant that any vendor supplying plant and equipment could be accommodated in this uh, APM system. Uh, even if Whitegate decided to change out certain DOPs and uh, change the, the supplier, this APM is capable of integrating um, all vendors. And as well as that, the system is infinitely scalable. It's only limited by the level of data information that we require from the systems. So to summarize, the unique selling point of APM was the ability to capture the entire plant with the APM. The system has the capability to deliver performance information across the four corners of Whitegate, and it's seen as a major building block in the implementation of our asset management program for Whitegate. In terms of the, the, um, the IT system, I, I suppose like a lot of organizations, I, you know, a lot of us are very heavily dependent on IT systems now, so whatever system GE had to introduce, had to sort of pass scrutiny for our own internal IT department. And it was a clear concern of how this new APN system would integrate with the existing plat IT platforms working on Whitegate. You know, our concerns, I suppose everybody would, would be aware of the concerns we had in terms of the compatibility across existing and new systems, general reliability of the new systems. Uh, again, being, what, is it user-friendly, um, both for internal and, and external users? But the, the big one was security. And I'm sure these types of are just concerns facing many organizations today. And the introduction there, I think it's highlighted in blue at the bottom of the screen of the, uh, the DMZ LAN, which is a new network introduced by, by um, GE, which accommodated the AP, APM flop platform. And this, uh, as you see there on this slide, the, um, it, it contains all the components that you saw on the previous slide that make up the APM system, all contained within the DZM. And integrated in an efficient and effective manner. And again, security was a big issue, as I mentioned earlier. And again, this, this sort of architecture uh, suited our organization and it passed our sort of secure, security screening um, position. Um, it also meant that we third-party support, so the, the OEM equipment suppliers had seamless access into this uh, DMZ LAN if they wanted to interrogate their own equipment, whereas up to now, third-party OEMs have no access to the power station and no access to their own equipment, and this sort of network allowed them that access. I think in terms of the size as well, we, 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 when we saw the so architecture, we thought we were going to be uh, having to build maybe a, a separate IT room for all this equipment, but as it turns out, it all fitted in quite neatly into a little box. I think you can see a photograph there of a cabinet on the left-hand side. So it was very um, smart and discreet in terms of the size. Um, I just want to summarize uh, where we are with, with APM today. So we, we've added in hundreds and hundreds of sensors across the site. I mean, quick synopsis of what we have. We have 80 vibration sensors, 75 additional um, current transformers, 36 anomaly alert units, uh, 29 uh, valve positioners, um, and, and many other pieces of individual standalone bits of kit that will go into sort of the, the hardware that will go into support the asset performance management system supplied by GE. So the, the system went live in Q1 of 2015, and really what we've been doing for the last year effectively has been collecting data across the plant. 
and building up what is seen as a base operating model or a model that we could call, you know, a healthy model of each sub-asset. So every pump, every fan, every motor, we're now building up a, a profile of, of what it looks like in terms of temperatures, pressures, vibrations, etc. Um, we've had a number of, of high-profile f- captures already this year, and I'll just quickly sort of go through two of the, the more higher-profile ones. Um, the, the, the new APM system has been tracking some concerns around movement of a bearing on the gas turbine. We've had a history on this particular bearing, and in the past, the plant has had to take some unscheduled downtime due to concerns around this bearing, uh, with a financial cost to our company. With this new asset performance management system, which from GE, um, what we're, we're being provided with a, a far higher level of detailed information on the condition of the bearing. We, we've calibrated what we see as, as a sort of a healthy picture of, of the bearing during operation as it, as it changes with load and outside temperature and other factors in the power station. And now we are automatically informed when we have deviations away from this healthy picture. Um, the net result is that we know uh, we're now building up a level of confidence in, in the APM system to tell us the overall health of the entire center line and on all eight bearings on that center line. And it's also teaching us that we can have excursions from this healthy picture that we don't necessarily need an intervention, that we can actually understand what's causing those interventions, be it you know, a change in load or a change in temperature, etc. So there's another high-profile one here that we've captured is on the turning gear. Um, and the effectively an anomaly large unit on the turning gear on an electric an electric um, analyzer has picked up a mechanical failure uh, or potential mechanical failure in the turning gear um, it has allowed we we certainly wouldn't have captured this before and we've made a decision now that we're going to change this turning gear at the next available opportunity so we have an outage plan for next march so we're going to take that opportunity to change the, the affected part um, the cost savings to us is is is, is um, enormous in terms of having to go for an unscheduled outage is just to, to fail unexpectedly. Whereas now we can just the only cost to us is the the cost of the spare part and fitting it. Whereas we're we're going to carry that out in the planned outage. So there's a there's a massive saving there for us already in capturing this particular incident. Um, so where we see ourselves at the moment, we see ourselves in a phase where we're, we're capturing information information for the, in the plan through the APM. We're building up a healthy picture. We're having our catches. We're already making decisions that are, we, we hope are going to save the plant money and, and improve performance and improve, improve reliability and availability. And we're learning about what APM can do. We see it as an educational type curve um, where we're, we're arriving up at is a healthy picture or profile for every sub-asset. Um, and the system, the APM system, has the ability to learn itself and it continues to monitor. And, and we're engaged in a, in a process of continual improvement with it. So our next steps really in terms of um, the APM, um, we're collecting, as I said, we're collecting data and gathering information. Um, the, we're now planning to roll out APM as part of our overall asset management program for Whitegate. So we're satisfied this product has the ability and the capability to deliver what we want under our asset management system. And that's going to be rolled out in the next few weeks. Um, and the asset, that asset management system is a, is a collaboration between Borgash and GE because, as I said, we're building an asset management system for the power station and which will incorporate the APM. We're also in discussions with GE. The, I think earlier there Will pre, pre, um, showed that he had a package there, operational excellence. Um, we're, 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 we're in discussions and we hope to have it finalized and reach agreement with GE before the end of this year to roll out the operations ex- excellence program, which will be a bolt on per, platform onto the APM and, and hopefully we'll have that um, um, up and running in 2016 and, and that effectively is the end of our presentation and um, thanks very much for listening and, um, and hopefully maybe next year we can come back and give people an update on how APM is going and, and maybe hopefully the, uh, the rollout of our operational excellence program with uh, G. So thanks very much and I think I'm handing over to Chad now. Great, Declan. Thank you very much. Um, as, as Declan mentioned, uh, my name is Chad Stoker, and I'm, I'm, uh, I run a monitoring center that helps support uh, APM customers. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what is APM in detail, um, and just provide a, a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, 
technolo uh, technology kind of a perspective on what APM is. And, and, and the heart of APM is it's one solution for any OEM for any critical piece of equipment. So whether it's a GE gas turbine, whether it's a gas turbine from another manufacturer, or whether it's a small pump, um, if, it rep if that piece of equipment represents a threat to your production, APM can create a digital twin and help you monitor and minimize or eliminate threats to your production. Uh, one platform, regardless of equipment type, regardless of OEM. Um, and so APM creates this digital twin. It creates this point of context that allows our customers to make better decisions. And they can make better decisions because they receive earlier warning. Um, far ahead of hard alarm limits, far ahead of trips, they get notification, as Declan was saying, of issues developing, uh, you know, for instance, on the bearing. Um, APM delivers that early warning, delivers that context, and then they have the ability to start to make better decisions, to start to understand the risk that their pieces of equipment um, have, and, and, and make economic decisions about when they want to take outages, how do they want to optimize, optimize their, their maintenance practices. Um, these digital twins, of course, account for um, operational conditions, ambient conditions, uh, changes in load. Um, and then they provide early notification of true deviations that aren't related to um, any of those, those other contextual conditions. So that's the core heart of the, and the technology behind APM. Um, APM also comes with services. Um, so we recognize you, know, you have very complex machines, advanced analytics, um, but APM brings the expertise across GE uh, to the customer. And, and whether it's um, in, in, you know, multiple divisions of GE coming together to really provide customers the context and the advice and the consultation to make better decisions and, and help our customers avoid surprises. Um, and that's really our goal you know, with, with APM in, in terms of the technology and the service is providing that, that right information to the right person at the right time so um, you know, customers can choose to run a piece of equipment to failure if that's the most economical decision, or customers can choose to have spare parts on site. Um, they can choose to have an outage on a weekend versus a weekday and save themselves production losses. Um, or they can choose to undertake a maintenance action during a scheduled outage that they weren't planning on doing. Um, they wouldn't, the piece of equipment hasn't tripped offline, the piece of equipment hasn't fired an alarm, but they can do an unscheduled maintenance action during a scheduled outage and save themselves an outage and save themselves those, those production losses. And that's really the value that the APM solution brings. In terms of deliverables and, and context that you, you would get from the APM solution is, you know, most people when they think of monitoring and diagnostics, they're used to trip response and fast acting issues that say, you know, you need to act now, this is a critical issue right now. Um, but that's only a small part of, of the information and the context that APM provides. The vast majority of information might be presented in a weekly or monthly context that says this is an issue that's starting to develop. Um, we're going to recommend you start monitoring it. We're going to recommend you start creating maintenance uh, plans um, on how to basically address this. Um, and it really becomes an economic decision. You know, when is the best time to do this? Let's monitor this. Can this issue um, can we run with this issue until your next outage so you don't have to take an unscheduled outage, you know, so on and so forth. And that's, that's really the new type of information that APM brings to the table. In addition, you know, we provide monthly risk roll-ups so you can understand your risk. Um, you know, equipment can run in various states of degradation, but you know, what the services and the technology provide is clear insight um, to, to our customers so that they can basically make their, their, their best decision in terms of managing their risk. And finally, uh, value. Um, you know, we provide uh, value reports that help you monetize the value of the failure that never happened, help you monetize the value you know, of the predictive analytics. So uh, what customers are getting you know, value from APM components today? Um, we have more than 2,400 units, more than 10,000 assets, hundreds of thousands of sensors um, are basically being um, you know, taken, th those values are being sampled in real time, they're being stored in historians, and digital twins, points of context, are being created for all these critical sensors.
So operators you know, around the world now have the ability to look inside the heart alarm limits to see when issues start developing um, and not wait until issues progress to the point where they, they trip a heart alarm limit or they, or they um, trip a unit offline. But they can see when issues start developing. Um, and the services around APM, you know, we talk to our customers on a weekly basis. We're delivering you know, more than 350 reports, 160 calls per week, and we're generating actionable notifications, predictive maintenance work orders. Um, around the world, customers are taking advantage of the APM solution and services to um, you know, top off a lube oil cooler early, to maintain a bearing early, to uh, calibrate a valve early, um, all before um, they experience the secondary and tertiary effects of failure, which are truly so costly. Um, going a little bit deeper on the services, you know, what, what comes with the services and, and what APM is, it's an integration of both technology and services. Um, so there's, uh, there have been many, many um, uh, uh, areas of GE with deep expertise, um, deep expertise on the gas turbines, diesel generators, um, you know, compressors, a balance of plant equipment. And uh, what we're doing with APM is bringing all of those um, deep areas of expertise together um, in, in one um, cohesive uh, services platform. Um, so we're all using the same platform, we're all sharing the same uh, methodology uh, in terms of reporting to customers, and that really gives the customer you know, one interface. Um, so they can, customers can benefit from the best expertise across GE, um, combining these different service uh, models um, to really uh, you know, help customers, again, make better decisions and, and avoid surprises. So in addition to the services integration, it's technology integration as well. So yesterday, you know, GE had uh, deep OEM expertise. They had thermal performance monitoring solutions. Uh, we had, um, you know, smart signal predictive analytics solutions, Bentley System 1 vibration solutions, all these different solutions um, that could be provided to customers. And what Predix is, is putting all of those technology solutions onto a single uh, suite, onto a single stack called APM powered by Predix. And what that means is um, all of the um, expertise and subject matter experts across GE are now using the same um, software platform. Um, we can communicate more, more seamlessly, and that allows us to, to deliver better for our customers. And customers can directly interface and use the software. Um, so where we, we used to have different silos, we now have one suite um, with machine and equipment health, reliability management, and thermal performance. Um, with the different solutions is part of those different you know uh, uh, portions of that suite. Um, and then as as we go forward, we're going to continue to add to the suite. Um, both GE developers and external developers can add solutions to the suite, so it really builds that holistic package. And this is how we're really tying all the way from the sensors to the CEO, you know, whether it's economic optimization, reliability management, uh, thermal performance optimization, um, you know, planned maintenance optimization, work order optimization, all of those solutions are brought together in one software package, one software platform, um, and one services um, you know, a combined integration model, and that really allows that information to flow from all the way from the sensors to the CEO. And that's when um, you know, our customers can truly make much better decisions in a much more timely manner. Um, and I think with that, I will turn it back over for uh, questions. Excellent. Thank you guys very much for your uh, extremely informative uh, presentation. We have had a number of really good questions come in from the audience during the course of the program, and now is a great time, if you haven't yet, uh, to type in your questions, uh, and we will try to consolidate similar questions and answer as many as possible with the time remaining. As I mentioned before, for those questions we're not able to answer due to time constraints, uh, we will try to answer individually following the program. So uh, first question, uh, I believe, really for uh, probably best suited for Will and Chad. Uh, the question is, how do you access real-time operational data? Yeah, this is Will. I, I think uh, it depends on the, the, the customer today. We do that in several uh, fashions. If a customer has uh, already installed you know, a, a data collection or a storing system, we can 
connect uh, into that. Uh, in addition, we have the ability to connect directly into uh, you know the DCS system uh, to pull uh, data uh, through that method as well. So again, it's a variety depending on uh, what the customer already has in place uh, and what is uh, the preference from that perspective. Great. Next question, uh, I will try to, uh, to ask properly here. It's asking whether CMMS has been integrated with MND or only to Pi Historian. Yeah, I could take that as well. The, the uh, CMMS system is uh, so the condition, uh, or sorry, the maintenance management systems uh, that customers have today are an important piece of an overall maintenance strategy. Uh, today, we are working with uh, other vendors to uh, partner with uh, and, and make those connections into that system, again, as part of that overall strategy. So today, we're, we're primarily focused in on uh, what we might call work identification. So you know, having those analytics that are looking for those problems that uh, Declan talked about, you know, where you're identifying potential issues with equipment, uh, but then connecting into uh, the CMS system to create uh, those work orders and, and, and execute that work uh, is an important piece, as well as um, reading back out of those systems to understand you know, what maintenance activities are going on, uh, and again, tie that into your overall maintenance strategy. Uh, so the answer is yes, we, we do tie into those, uh, those systems, and not just the uh, historians. Excellent. Next question for you guys. Does GE Predix have solutions addressing IGCC optimization, reliability, and machine health and diagnostics? Um, sure, I, I can take that one. Um, I guess uh, what I would say is um, APM, you know, whether it's a, a coal plant, a combined cycle, or an IGCC plant, um, the APM technology is fundamentally OEM and equipment type agnostic. Um, it can monitor any critical piece of equipment that represents a threat to your production. Um, so we can help monitor all those critical pieces of equipment and let you know as soon as issues start to develop, as soon as um, deviations start to occur, and then help you prioritize and plan accordingly. Very good. Yeah, questions are flowing in, so everyone in the audience, feel free to, to chime in here uh, in our Q&A session. Uh, next question up is, as with any software platform, there is an expected life and upgrades. Please provide expected life cycle of the APM platform and the expected upgrade period and cost. Yeah, I can take that. As, uh, that's actually one of the the things that uh, benefits and uh, value from the APM perspective uh, as a cloud uh, offering, uh, we eliminate some of that concern that you have uh, with traditional software. So, you know, typically, as, as the question kind of references, you know, uh, people are used to software that you would, you know, download, install, and then new uh, updates would come out on a periodic basis, whether once or twice a year, uh, and you'd have to go and go through that upgrade process and cost. Uh, with a cloud solution. Uh, you, the software is continuously updated um, in, in a real-time manner. So, one, it prevents there's no large, uh, you know, upgrade transition period when you when a new uh, version rolls out. Uh, in addition, uh, the time to value is is um, you know shortened dramatic, uh, drastically. Right, you're not waiting, you know, six months for the new feature or new functionality to come out that could start providing you value. Uh, in your plan or facility, uh, you get it immediately as it's developed. So, um, as as part of APM is geared towards a subscription model uh, as a cloud service. Uh, so, from that, that subscription kind of automatically includes uh, you to get those upgrades as they come out again, uh, and they're kind of seamless to the user uh, as uh, you know updates are done, new functionality is added. You know, it's it's again you get that as they're coming out. So there's really no life uh, ended life period or cycle that you would have with traditional software. So again, a, a big benefit there. Um. Great, thanks. Um, next question here, I, I believe, is for for Declan here. Uh, have you had a culture shift in the company to become more proactive? 
Yeah, we certainly have. Um, I mean, we, we, we've we moved now definitely in our own organisation to looking at utilising the information from the whole asset management system and the APM um, in terms of trying to predict the, the performance of the unit going forward and, and invest in, in performance management, you know, and certainly in Borgash it has an NG, there's certainly a change here within the whole operations team that proactively use information from the APM system. Um, and uh, as I said, in those catches that I mentioned earlier, there are two good examples of, of, you know, where previously we would have waited for alarms because that's all we had. We're now predicting what could happen in the future and taking action now to prevent um, situations deteriorating. So there is a, there's a cultural shift right across both organizations, and it's still a changing, a changing uh, culture to say that we, we are only understanding the sort of the implications and the benefits of the APM system. And it's, uh, it's, uh, eventually it's going to be right across the two organizations, and we see huge benefits in this. Very good. Thanks, Declan. Um, another question looks like it's uh, directed to you here, uh, Declan, as well. How important was choosing a solution that could connect to a wide range of assets? That was uh, hugely important, hugely important. I think I mentioned it in my, in my slide with respect to the balance of plant. We, we felt hugely exposed on balance of plant, less so on the center line. You know, we had the, the center line equipment was, was linked into GE, M&D in the States, so we had backup there and we had people analyzing that. And again, it was post the event. I suppose now the entire plant has been automatically monitored for us. It's, it's sort of um, it's, um, learning what a healthy system looks like, and then it's warning us where it's deviating from that healthy system. And I think it links up there with other questions that are coming in there about, you know, it's learning. So it's learning every time we start the plant, every time we stop the plant, every time we change load, every time we turn the fan on and off, it learns the reaction of the plant right across the plant, not just the gas turbine, but everything right through to pumps and motors, the HSG, and so on and so forth. So the entire plant system is, is sort of learning what we do. And, and when we tell it that, you know, this is the healthy picture, um, we can then sort of um, easily identify when that picture changes. And as your question says, it was um, the, the range of assets across Whitegate. We have, we have over in excess of a thousand different types of assets here, from big to small. And this is connected right across the site. So that multi-asset approach was was um, a unique selling point for the system. Very good. Next question here on the docket, we've got time probably for uh, for a few more before we wrap up and reach the top of the hour. Uh, next one, uh, probably best suited for, for Will and Chad, is it absolutely necessary to install additional sensors to implement the Predix platform? So, uh, I'll take that one. Uh, no, the answer is no. Um, so the the APM platform uses the uh, your existing sensor set. Um, so uh, whatever instrumentation you have in place, um, you know, we'll use that to start creating models and, and providing diagnostics. Um, actually, part, of the, part of the APM implementation, you'll get information that actually helps you assess your sensor set and helps you assess your sensor gaps. Um, so you know, we can tell you um, you know where you have uh, uh, won't be able to detect certain issues uh, because you don't have instrumentation or that instrumentation is bad. Um, the more inf in sensors you provide and the more sensors you choose to install, um, the more coverage you will have and the more specific um, and, and, and specific our recommendations and, and diagnoses can be. Um, some of our customers um, who've been on, on the solution for a while are starting to use APM actually as an optimization of their sensor management budget. Um, so they're looking at this technology and saying, I now have budget X. Where should I spend that to provide my, my greatest reduction of risk? All right. I have time for a couple more questions here. So next one uh, for you guys is, does this system have the capability of analyzing one start of a plant against another start? So in other words, does the system perform transient analysis for cycling plants? Sure. I, I can take that one, Wills. Yes, there's a, a 
transient startup analysis for combustion turbines. Um, so the technology um, can allow you to uh, train a model on one start and compare it to uh, uh, other starts. Or on the fly, you can look at um, transient uh, behavior of starts from different assets, um, put them in together to help you know, uh, diagnose an issue or understand an issue. Very good. All right, so we've got time for, for one last question here. How do you all make all of this specialized predictive information available to the non-expert user? Yeah, I can, I can take that. I think uh, one of the key things that we saw that was missing from current solutions that were in place uh, from other vendors and even our, some of our own things that we've provided in GE was a focus on the user, right? The, the, the user experience and, and taking that into account that every user is not the same. So, uh, you know, GE has invested a lot in software in general, and part of that investment has been in uh, the user experience uh, domain expertise. So knowing, uh, you know, hiring experts that are uh, familiar with human interaction, human machine interaction, uh, and developing uh, interfaces that are intuitive, uh, that are easy to understand, and, and and you know, because there was a there was a lot of value being lost in the fact that some of these expert systems that were out there uh, were difficult uh, to use. You had to be very uh, specifically trained. Uh, and again, as I went back to earlier, you know, some of the this, the this loss of workforce or changing workforce and retiring those those expertise and skill sets were being lost. So it was very important for us to create uh, a system uh, that did have that focus, that was intuitive, easy to use, that was common. Uh, that you know uh, someone newly starting out could quickly pick it up and understand uh, how to gain value from it uh, as well across the multiple different uh, applications and, and and analytics that were there so I you know I think you'll see that uh, as you if you get, you know, get a chance to experience uh, or demo or see the the application you'll see that it's very in intuitive uh, and kind of uh, navigates the user right through things that they would have to do uh, to utilize the, that information. Great. Well, we've reached the uh, the top of the hour here, so I uh, want to, uh, again, let uh, you all know in the audience, uh, we'll address further questions individually by email. Thank you very much to Declan, Will, and Chad uh, for really a tremendous, uh, insightful presentation, and thanks once again to GE for underwriting today's event. Thank you all in the audience for attending. We hope you will benefit from today's presentation. Hope you all have a wonderful day.